first of all, if you could just tell us your name my and, and where you're from. So, my name is Abraham Wacht, but I'm known as Avi, Avi Wacht, and I'm from currently in. Uh, okay. So, I'm currently living in Santa Monica, California, but I'm originally from Israel and previously from Germany. So, tell me um, when you were born. Yes. Well, I was born in a DP camp, displaced people, persons camp, outside of Munich, Germany. My parents are Holocaust survivors from Poland, and I was born in uh, 1946, but in 1947, we moved, my parents went to Israel, and that's where I stayed for 20 more years. Tell me, like, your first memory of Uh, it's a, it was a very happy memories, you know, living in Tel Aviv, it, those are the old days where everybody knew each other, all the neighbor went into each other's home, doors were not locked, uh, so it was a happy childhood, many, many children, part of the big, uh, young generation that came after the war, and, uh, I had a fantastic time in Israel. Altogether, a great childhood. What did you study? Study in... Growing up, when you went to school? Well, when I studied, I studied regular. I went to school, I went to high school, and then I went to the army. So the schooling is nothing significant. Just took the regular courses that I needed to take. And... Uh, were done after the military service uh, in uh, 1966. I finished my military service there. And then what? Then what happened? So, on my bar mitzvah day, when people ask me what are you going to do, I announced to the party that I'm going to move to Amer to go to America to study. When I finish my military study, uh, my military service. Uh, everybody was laughing and yeah, sure, yes. Uh, but right after my military service, I made an application to go to school in New York, Queens College, who accepted me, and I traveled to America I, with my parents' blessings. And so I understand um, then something happened. Um, you started to work for the government. Right, so after the Six Day War, um, France boycotted Israel because they won the war, so they will not send them any more armament. And the United States said to Israel that they will supply them any military needs that they have. And in the beginning of 68, that's when I was there, they, the government of Israel opened their... Uh, Government of Israel Ministry of Defense Center in New York City to coordinate the purchases of all the military equipment that they need and the request they looked for Israeli students to help in the process other than the people that were sent as from Israel to run the project. So I was one of the students that applied and got a job in the military section of military military supplies shipment to Israel. Can you remember a particular thing that happened, something that made you particularly proud? Or... Well, yeah, I was proud altogether to be in this group of people. We were quite a few young people, about 20, that we worked in the, in the old days. When I left a few, five years later, there were 300 people working there. Uh, and it was very cordial, it was very happy because I was able to stay legally in America while I was working for the government of Israel. Um, one case I remember clearly is a case where 
the Yom Kippur War started and um, the next day, the next day or the next two days, when I went to school, I was full time in school. I was married by then to my wife, Rona. Uh, my wife got a call from the government of Israel asking her work and they, they would like to talk to me. And she told them I'm in school and I will not be coming back until the afternoon. Uh, they requested to know if she can tell them where uh, the, where will I be, what classes will I take. Uh, she said, sure, here is his itinerary. And uh, I was sitting in class when two guys walked into the room and asked the teacher, if they can uh, get Avi walked out of the class because he's needed to come to do something for the government of Israel. So the, the, the teacher did not object, of course, uh, and I went with them. They, are, they, they told me that I, they are looking for me to help coordinate, coordinating the shipment of armament from JFK, from the airport in New York. And basically, you have to go there and start working, which I did. I did that with some other guys that were called in, and we were there for almost, I would say, 10 or 14 days. I don't remember exactly. Basically, two weeks. I think one, one or a few times during that time, I was able to go home and get some clothing, and uh, etc. But. For two weeks, I was sitting there and making sure that shipments will go to Israel as soon as possible. So that was a good and interesting memory. Uh, the bottom line, the good side of it was the better. The a good side of it was when I came back to school. Uh, my teachers advised me that I don't have to go to and take any exams that were taken. They knew about this, what was going on, mostly Jewish uh, teachers. And I was released from taking the, the exam for, for that time that I was missing. Um, but it, it made me feel good being able to be in America outside of Israel and not being able to do anything there, but at least to do something for Israel during the war uh, while I was in America. That's what uh, I remember. Yeah. Sorry. So I'm just curious, jumping to, to APAC, I, was, you know, what are you, I know you just started the policy conference, so right. it's the beginning, but is there anything that strikes you about being here? Well, nine years ago, we started. My wife and I started to come to the policy conference, and the first time we were here, it was a life-changing event for both of us. the The work that is done by APEC, the smartness, the dedication, and the res results achieved are second to none. They are just unbelievable what can be done in America for Israel by an organization such as APEC. So since then, we are fully committed, we are full in, and we are trying to do our best to support the organization and to enlighten other people to come and join and contribute from their time or money or whatever they can do. Connection, uh, relationship counts. That's a motto of APEC, and we are doing our best that it will be counted. I couldn't say it better myself. Thank you. Thank you. Anything you wanted to add that I forgot to ask you? No. You said it all. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. you. Appreciate your help. Right, Pete's going to take that microphone. <laughs> Watch your, watch your, watch your head. I'm not. Uh, uh, I'll wait.